Hi, and welcome to Curl Tutorials. Today we'll be taking a look at how you can create image sliders using the image slider widget from our key add-ons for Elementor plugin. With this widget, you can create image sliders of different looks and styles to match your site. You'll be able to pick between having sliders with pagination, full screen sliders, or those that have a fade effect and are combined with other elements. Generally, you can combine the widgets from the key add-ons collection to create your dream design. The image slider widget is highly customizable and it lets you enable image pop-ups and create slider types that show one image at a time. There are all kinds of variations you can make with this widget. So let's see how we can make one of these for ourselves. Head over to the back end and in the Elementor sidebar, search for image slider. There it is. Now drag it over to the right. Don't worry, the widget is on the page. It just looks like there's nothing there because we haven't added any images to our gallery yet. So the first thing we need to do is add some. Click here to select your images. I'll be using these three. You can select multiple images at the same time, just hold down the shift key. Then create a new gallery. By the way, the images you pick should have the same or at least similar dimensions to keep your slider looking neat and balanced. Okay. Insert gallery. And this is what my image slider looks like by default. The auto rotate is on and there's a discrete pagination at the bottom. Now, if you'd like to change the image order, you can do so by reopening the window where you pick the images. So, this is where you can edit your gallery. And all you need to do is drag and drop the images into their new positions. Then they will be displayed on the front end from left to right in the order that you arrange them. Since we sorted that out, we can move on to the slider settings. In here we have things like the option to enable slider loop. It's set to yes by default. This allows the slider to keep moving in a loop on its own. If you want a slider that your visitors have to navigate, then you can switch this to no. The option below this is enable centered slides. It's set to no by default and you can switch it to yes to enable this functionality. I'll show you in a moment what precisely this does. For now, let's move on to the Enable Slider Autoplay option. This is set to Yes by default and it's what allows the slider to start moving as soon as the page loads, so the visitors won't have to trigger it in any way. Below this, we have the Slider Duration field. The default value is 5000 milliseconds and that's the amount of time that the slide is shown before being replaced by the next one. I made the duration for mine shorter by setting 2000 milliseconds. Ok, now the slider animation duration. The default value here is 800 and it represents the duration of the animated effect that makes the images seem to slide, so like a transition between images. If I reduce the value to 300, I'll get this more abrupt switch between the slides. I think the default value makes the slider look smoother, so I'll remove this. Following that, we have the Enable Slider Navigation option. By default, the navigation is enabled, you can see the subtle arrows on the sides. But you can set No here and turn them off. I want to keep my navigation enabled, so I'll switch this back to Yes. Next to that, we have the Enable Slider Pagination option. Our default pagination are these three dots at the bottom. I'll disable them since I already have the pagination arrows enabled. Below this, the Image Proportions option lets us pick the size of the images in our slider. So this is very handy for making your slider images uniform in proportion, which contributes to your slider looking neat and professional. Now you can pick any of these options, such as Square, to get square images, or Portrait, to get a more rectangular image layout. For myself, I'll set Original to use the original image proportions. Then we have Enable Partial Columns. It's set to No by default, but I'll change that to Yes so I can show you. With this option enabled, we can use the Partial Column value to set which percentage of the incoming images will be visible. I'll set it at 0.2 so we get just a peek at the next image on the side. And with this set, we can go back to the option I skipped at the start, Enable Centered Slides. If I switch it to Yes now, it's going to center everything so even my partial columns will be split between the two ends of the slider. Now that we've seen what they do, I'll put these options back as I don't plan on using them. Ok, 
After this, we can pick the number of columns we want to have in our slider. 3 is the default, but I'll switch this to 1. OK, there we go. We also have the columns responsive option. Besides the predefined default, we can use custom settings. These let us manually adjust how many columns will be shown on each screen size. Since I set only one column to be shown, even on the largest screens, I'll go back to the predefined setting, which will preserve the same number on other screens as you can't go lower than one. Following this, we have the space between items option. If you're displaying more than one column, you can add a pixel value here that will determine how much space you'll have between each image or slide. Since I'm using only one column, I can remove the default value, thereby removing any space. Then we have the slide effect option. This is basically the animation for the slide transition. The default one is slide, so it makes the images seem to slide. And if you switch it to fade, then the images will fade one into the other. So the transition effect is different, and you can decide which one you prefer. For myself, I'll set this back to slide. Then there's the option to enable the lightbox pop-up. It's set to yes by default. This means that when someone clicks on an image, it's going to open in the same window as an overlay. And that way, visitors can browse through your entire gallery. Now, I'll just click here on the middle icon where you have the section settings and then right click to open the drop down where I can activate the navigator. And in it, I can click on this widget to reopen its settings. You might be thinking that it's way easier to click directly on the element to open the options, but with images that becomes a bit touchy. And having the navigator at hand will help us get back to the options we need more quickly and easily. Now, we were in slider settings, and we've reached the lightbox pop-up option, which I want to disable for my slider. OK. And after that, we have image hover. It's set to none by default, but you can pick one of the remaining options to get a hover effect for your slider images. With zoom in, the effect looks like this. With the zoom effect picked, you can also choose the zoom origin. The default is center, but you can switch it to top, for example. And now the top part of the image will be zoomed in. You can experiment to see which origin point fits your needs best. But, getting back to the image hover, we also have zoom out, and it looks like this. And the last option is move, which looks like this. Since having a slider on auto-rotate is dynamic enough for me, I'll set this back to none. After this, we have the overlay color. So, if you'd like an overlay, you can set whichever color you like here. This one, for example. And then give it a degree of transparency. There. I'll stop there, but you can make the color more transparent to make it even fainter. It's up to you. For myself, I'll reset this. And the same principle applies to the overlay hover color. You can set any color you like, and it's going to be visible on hover. Don't forget to give it a degree of transparency so the image stays visible. And then you get something like this look, depending on your settings, of course. OK. Underneath this, we have the developer tools. When we open them, there's just one option here. And if we switch its setting to yes, it will display the widget in the form of a standard WordPress shortcode, this text. Then we can easily copy it for use elsewhere on our site. Now let's move on to the Style tab. And I can turn the Navigator off for this bit. And in the Style tab, the first set of settings is for the slider navigation style. And the second is for the slider pagination, if you haven't disabled it like I have. Now, in terms of options, we have the navigation position. The default is inside, so the arrows are within the slides. But there's also outside to move the arrows outside the bounds of the slides. And there's together, which places the arrows next to one another at the bottom of the slider. If you opt to keep them together, you can switch the navigation alignment between left and right. However, my design involves putting the navigation at the outside of the slider. So I'm going to change this to outside. Then the hide navigation lets me set below which screen width the navigation arrows will stop being visible. So there are a few choices here and you can try them all out and see how they look on different devices. For myself, I'll set it to below 768 pixels, which is the width of the portrait orientation on a tablet. The next option allows us to adjust the navigation vertical offset. Basically, this lets us move the position of the arrows up or down. 
You can drag this slider or type in a new value to adjust your offset. I'll remove this now as the default setting puts the arrows at the middle of the element height. And with navigation horizontal offset, we can move the arrows to the left or the right. And for this one, I'll set a slightly different value than the default. And I'll put that value in percentages. This will be helpful for the overall responsiveness and the display on smaller screens. Okay, there we go. Now, if you want to replace the default arrows used for the navigation, you'll have the next two options. The left arrow for previous slides is replaced here. And you can use the icon library to pick its replacement or upload an SVG. And you have an identical field for picking the right arrow or the next slide navigation here. So, once you've picked what you'll be using for navigation, you can customize its looks. You can change the color here. We also have the option to change the background color for the navigation. Now, both of these are for the normal navigation display. And we have another set of options for its display on hover. There are the same two color options, only this time for hover display we have a new option. Enable hover arrow move. It's on right now, so we get this movement when we hover. But if we switch it to no, then there'll be no arrow movement on hover. I'll keep mine this way. Now let's get back to the normal settings. I'm going to temporarily set a background color. This one for example. So I can better show you the effect of some of these options below. Specifically, the navigation arrow holder width and the navigation arrow holder height options. When I start increasing the values here, the color grows wider to reflect the widening of the arrow holder. And the same happens when I increase the height. So the holder is the space set out for the navigation arrow. While it has an indirect impact on the size of the arrow itself, we have a separate size option if we want to adjust that properly. So let me reset this. And this too. Now we come to the navigation arrow size option. So this is the option I was just referring to, the one that will help us adjust the size of the arrow itself rather than the space around it. You can make your settings using the slider. Try not to be heavy handed about it though. Or you can type in a value here if you find it easier than getting the slider position just right. I'll put 45 pixels for my arrow size. And that's it for the slider navigation style options. Below this we have the slider pagination style. Since I disabled the pagination for my slider, I have to turn it back on to be able to access the options for it. Just a moment. Yes, okay. And getting back to the style tab. Now when I open the slider pagination style, I'll be able to see some options here. And those options are things like position, where we can pick between having it inside or outside of the slider. I'm going to keep it on the outside so we can see the effect of the options better. If we increase the pagination offset, we get the pagination moving away from the slider. Following this, we have the pagination color that includes this standard color picker. And we have the settings for its active display. Basically, we can change the color of just one dot here, the one that's connected to the currently active slide. Then, let's get back to the normal display. We have the border type option for framing the pagination dots. I'll set solid just to show you. And we can't see it yet because I need to give it a width first. One pixel will do. And it needs a color, say this one. And we can see a thin red border around each dot that makes our pagination. I'll reset this as I don't plan on using a border, but if you want to, you can try all of these other border types to see which one you like best. After this, we have the pagination size option. It's very straightforward. By increasing the value here, we increase the size of the dots. There. And our last option is for the space between bullets or dots. You can adjust the values here to space out the pagination dots. And that's all our options covered. Now I'll just get back to the content tab to turn the pagination back off as I wasn't planning on keeping it in my finished element. There. No. And I can update to save my work. Now before we finish up, there's one more thing I wanted to show you. How to change this slider from in grid to full width. Now we're all likely working with different themes, so how these settings work for you might differ. What I'm using is the key theme, made by our very own theme here at Codes Interactive. 
The entire key theme and all 100 of its demos are created using the key add-ons plugin, and both the theme and the plugin have been designed to complement each other perfectly. Additionally, we made sure the key theme is compatible with Elementor's full width page template. You should keep in mind that the same might not be true for your theme as, depending on the one you're using, the full width template might be rendered differently. In my case, using the key theme, in order to change the section with the slider to full width, I need to go to the page settings by clicking here. Then under page layout, I'm going to make sure element or full width is selected. You can also use the key full width layout if you're using the key theme. Basically, you need a full width page layout to be able to stretch the content to full width. I'll stick with Elementor's full width template as it's the one all users should have access to. Now, a template won't automatically switch the page content from in grid to full width. For that to happen, you need to change the settings for the section. Click here on this middle icon to open the section settings. Then, in the Layout tab, find Content Width and switch the settings from Boxed, which is keeping your content in grid, to full width. There we go. Now, my slider is stretched from one edge of the page all the way to the other. OK. I'll make my slider boxed again so we can take a look at another option. And that's the width here. By dragging this slider, you can adjust the width of this section all the way to full width. You can also type in your chosen pixel width, it's up to you. But this option gives you another way of adjusting the width of the content. OK, that's it. Let me just hit update to save my work as I'm done making my slider. Now, if we look back on the widgets page, you'll find the different things you can do with the image slider widget and see the potential variations you can make using it. The options we covered will help you make an image slider like any of these. You can copy the style and look from one of these examples, or you can make something completely different. It's up to you. In either case, this tutorial has hopefully helped you to see how easy making image sliders can be with the key add-ons for Elementor plugin and its image slider widget. If you have any questions, comments or suggestions, please drop us a line in the comments below. Also, make sure to subscribe to our channel and be the first to learn about new theme guides and tutorials. Thanks for watching.